Welcome to One in the Sheep Hour with Sujia and Ed. We're just two Asian Americans talking shit about shit. Hey, buddy. How are you? Totally forgot we had this today. <laughs> yeah. Not going to lie. I was laying in bed editing a video. My kid's like, Ron and Ed are here. I was like, oh, fuck, it's Tuesday. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I just had a lot on my mind. I've had a lot on my mind lately. I just like, but I'm glad I had my hair and makeup done already for the day. I, I almost text. I almost texted you because I was like, I hope Susie doesn't realize that because we're doing the thing this Saturday that we're not recording right, today. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I I had I knew we were recording this week. I just com- it just completely slipped my mind. But yeah. this okay. happens. We're here now. Life. And like I said, it was just a lucky coincidence that I happened to shower and wash my hair today. So outside of Tuesdays, I don't know what day it is. Yeah, right. Exactly. So. Well, that's you got one more day on you than than I do because I'm like I don't know what's happening most <laughs> days. Um, how was your week? Good. It was good. It was. How's good. your gout? Are you feeling better? Marginally, you it is actually a better. lot better. But you're wearing Crocs. Yeah. So oh I have my this, god, is that a new development? Yeah, I have this strict rule that I don't want to be seen in public in Crocs. This is public. <laughs> it, I a know. A little bit. But because every, like whenever I've had to leave the house this past week, mm-hmm. when I come home, my like ankle just hurts so much from mm, just the socks Sucks. oh my god really yeah just because like it's so socks? constricting you know oh, and then no. i feel like it makes it worse although sometimes i feel like the compression might help but it's just it's still painful so today i was just like you know what i was like i was melting last week because it was so hot of course it's not that hot today yes thank goodness and then i was like i also just i don't want to i don't want to have swollen feet at the end i of the day. feel like you know what embrace the crux it was it was there. They were made for this. <laughs> no, they were. <laughs> well, for comfort. They, oh yeah, and yeah, for yeah. you know, yes, they were. They're and made for be- running and sport. Mode. And <laughs> I'd love to see you with gout run with your shoes in sport mode right now. It'd be like so sad. It'd be like I have flat it's feet. Almost running. <laughs> I can't run anyway. <laughs> really? I mean, I can run, but not for long. Really? Yeah. Because your feet hurt, or like from flat feet. Yeah. I have like really arched feet. I don't want to talk too much about my feet, you sickos. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay for that. The arch of my foot is really high and then my toes go like this, like in a relaxed position. I know. Mine are so flat. They call them dancer feet. I'm like, but I've seen myself dance and it's not <laughs> good. <laughs> so I don't know. Mine are flat. Like there, there isn't even like a hint of an arch. Oh really? It's just flat. People say that my feet could really garner a lot of money on the internet. I haven't really delved into that because my feet have just this like really pretty arch to them but who said that? we'll see how That's desperate good. i get we'll see <laughs> unless it was like there your husband an echelon of my husband no no i mean like who has seen your feet and was like mm, no i i think i was talking about it with somebody they're like no there's like different like well you know like in like pornography oh i can say i can say porn here um in pornography there's like different like what what do you, what do you call them uh, levels not levels sub-genres? subjects Oh. Different subjects, right? Like yeah. types. I hear feet. feet is the same. Feet is a really big bunions. Industry. People with bunions, or people who like have like a missing toenail, or people who have those are big. I think so. You got a missing toenail? Oh my god! Oh, shit. I have it. I had this. You horrible- found your genre. <laughs> Beautiful. Maybe when you have like a huge flare up. Plus the missing toenail. Oh, is there an industry <laughs> for her gout? Who- what? There is something for everybody. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. Dude. When I was like 14 or 15, someone dropped in Korea at a bookstore, someone dropped this ginormous book and it landed corner on my big toe. Ooh. And then for like, oh. this is going to be gross, but for like six months, I just dealt with this horribly ingrown toenail that Ouch, I had. Oh, God. Until it started turning purple, and I was like, I think it's gonna rot off. And I finally went to the doctor, and they're like, Oh, that's bad. So they like, I have this like sliver of a toy nail on that one toe because <laughs> he had to pull the other part out from the root. So, like, permanently gone? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, there's this like little, little like weed part that's starting My to grow ex husband had something like that. Where it's because he played football and his feet would just get crunched up. I don't even know. Uh. So like part of his toenail, there was like a split in it. So part of it would grow like normally. And then there was this like little sliver and he would have to like pull the sliver out. Ah! (laughs) Sorry. Sorry This alone should be reason enough to not fucking marry you. But I did. Really, this conversation is really making me sweaty anyway. Yeah, I'm so sorry for all the feet talk. Should we trigger warning this? <laughs> <laughs> 
Some people like it. Some people not so much. Some people Aww. love it. Are you going to sleep? Oh, he's so sleepy. That is so cute. And you get a shot of the Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, but no, other than that, um, uh, I also hurt in my disc a little bit. Fucking a, dude. Are you, what are you doing? You're a hot mess. a hot mess. Cheese and crackers. What are you doing? I am yourself? a hot mess. You know, sometimes when it rains, I you mean... get gout and hurt. <laughs> Yes. I spent like an hour and a half today just like doing back stretches. Oh. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd probably be wearing like my workout. I have like brace. a massager thing. Do you want to borrow that? It's like a massager that has like a strap and then you like drape it around you and it's pretty awesome. I'll let you borrow. I'll let you try it out. Um, but yeah, other than that, been been championing the one family, you know, um, that's been that's been a thing. It's hard. It is hard. It's hard also because, you know. There's like a, a lot of pressure. And I know it's like not that far from the. If the you stuff don't know what I we're do. talking about, we're talking about, we're, we're trying to sponsor Palestinian families through this wonderful organization called Operation Olive Branch. And what they do is they basically, well, not sorry, they don't do it. Aaron Hadamer was doing it. And then they have a spreadsheet of families and you can sponsor them to try to help them raise money so that they can have the funds to, you know, leave, you know, out of Gaza, specifically Rafa, I think, right now into Egypt, you know, to safety. And it's so hard. I have cried so many times this week, just, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to center myself, obviously, but like, man, it's, it's tough. So like, I understand the pressure. I understand. Yeah, even when they were, even when they were like briefing me about the thing, the, the person who was talking to me, she was like, you know, my first family, I lost that. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. So she was like, yeah, she's like, you have to, Prepare yourself, and there's just like constant pressure. I just keep being like, I'm eating dinner, but should I like be making another video? Because like, what happens? And then if I know? make too many videos, is it is it too much? And then people lose interest and they stop watching your videos. How can I right. hook them into a video without being fucking corny and then making light of it? There's so much nuance yeah. to trying to do this well. And then there's even like it's just like horrible timing because like I'm pretty sure I'm being shadow banned on TikTok right now. I like don't think those two things so are mutually exclusive. I don't yeah. think because I'm also, I mean, I supplement my income with TikTok and my views, my views are fine, but the RPMs that they're giving me is so bad. It's crazy. Yeah. Usually for a video, you'll make between like 60 cents to like $1.50 per thousand views. I'm getting eight cents to 10 cents per thousand yeah, views. Crazy. It's crazy. I'm like, okay, well, I guess we'll dip into the savings because we're not going to make the monthly this month. There's no way, but but it is a small sacrifice for me to make yeah. right now. Now that's not sustainable for like the long run right now. I mean, obviously I still have my, my job, but like that's, that is secondary to, to yeah. what's important. But also it's tough because it's coming on the heels of that huge like block party 2024 yep. where people are blocking celebrities and influencers who have not talked about, you know, what's happening in Palestine, who have not taken a stand on, you know, their beliefs or whatever. And I have mixed feelings about that too. I really do. Um, and then of course people like Chris Olson and Lizzo have now been like, Oh, Hey, uh, I am working with operation olive branch. And yeah, Chris Olson, maybe a little less, but Lizzo, I watched that one and I was like, what are you You doing? could cover that. It was like, what, 20 grand or something? I forget what it was, but I was like, you could easily cover that. And a and hundred on the top of the list. Yeah. You know, there's like a thousand families on that list. It just, it just comes off really disingenuous when you know that you, without it really even affecting your wallet, she wouldn't even notice. She's that. worth like $40 million. $40 million. Like she could literally fund every single person on that spreadsheet and not even feel it. You know what I mean? So like, but I understand too, though. Not but, saying but it's, not time, her, it's not a responsibility. No, but, but man, at the that... same time, conversely, at least she's raising awareness for it. Yeah. At least, you know, she's making it more visible. And like, that's what's important. She's got like, what, 20 million followers, I'm sure at least, you know, so that's really important. That's really important too. So there's like, there's, I, I get conflicted because I'm not going to lie. When I see people like Lizzo and Chris Olsen make a video like out of the blue after not having talked about it at all, my upper lip does curl up. I do get like a, ugh, yeah, like, but then I don't really know how to feel what? about the blacklist either because like sometimes like you don't know why people aren't, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like it could be mental health. Like, I don't know. Is that, is that excuse enough? I don't know. Is it? I don't, I mean. Look, I, I think, you know, 
we have the luxury of being able to manage our mental, mental health, health if we yeah. need to. They do not have the luxury and, and of the, managing the longer their life. and more this happens and the more it, the it's the more that it's going on, the more I like am so firmly planted in where I stand. And I, I'm happy that like I've, I've lost, I've literally lost actual friends, like literal friends that I've had for 40 years, not exaggerating since like the third grade who are like you posting these things is anti-Semitic, and we're Jewish. And I'm like, are you really still running that narrative? Are you really still running that narrative? Yeah, actually, please stop. I grew up in a. What are you doing? Like Jewish people themselves are like, this is not what anti-Semitism yeah. is, and it's like that. That, and I don't know how they feel about it now because this is how they they spoke to me in the early part of this, like in like or like October, October, November is when I stopped talking to them. Cause they were like, you're anti-Semitic. We can't believe you're taking this stance. We can't believe that, you know, we've been friends with you for this long. And you know, you are, you know, you, you hate Jews and you want us to eradicate it off the place of the face of the earth. And I'm like, where I don't when? want that. Yeah, I don't, when did I, say I don't that? want that at all. Like what that hasn't, you know, never entered my mind in the slightest. And I don't know where they stand now. Like having so many, like, anti-Zionist Jewish people come out and being like, we don't want this in our name anymore. We don't, you know, and there's so many protests in Israel, protests all over the world, students. Campus students have spread worldwide now. Absolutely. Yeah. Japan Absolutely. Has, that, has them all over schools. Korea, yep. all over Europe, everywhere. And you have to ask yourself, it's, it, I'm of the opinion that most times in history, when college campuses are protesting something, they are nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10 on the right side, okay, yeah, on the right true. side of history. You know, they're protesting things like the Iraq war. Yep. They were protesting things like Vietnam. You know, like these are women's things, rights. The, yep. right. They are championing women's rights, like body right. autonomy, like yep. bodily autonomy, like, you know, in school integration, like these kinds of things. These are what the, the kids want. It's because the kids aren't, jaded and they're not so deeply planted into just capitalism and making money because they haven't gone out into the world yet to have to feel that way you know what i mean so yeah, like when you're young they're still pure right and wrong is so black and white. yeah so i don't know it's it's draining it's really draining though yeah. I'm, i feel i feel very depleted i've been really mind blown at the fact that like a lot of the, like i grew up i went to high school in a very in an area that had a lot of jewish people like i Spent a lot of times like celebrating Passover at friends' houses, you know, like sure. stuff like that. And I went to way more bat mitzvahs, bar and bat mitzvahs than I did birthday insane. parties. <laughs> so many. And it's mind blowing to me that so many of them who were used to be on the right side of stuff, you know, even like LGBTQ rights and stuff like that, to watch them take the Zionist side. And I... It's, I don't even so, know where I, to because they're start. because they're they've probably been aligned with you on everything else. Yeah, up to this because it's one thing it's so when it's crazy. other people's thing. Yeah, and it's other people's issues, and then you know when it's your issue, it's it it's different. It, it's a different thing. And then also that whole Haley Bailey thing. Did you see that? Yeah, man, little... that bitch is getting raked through the coals of the internet. It is so gnarly. She. But only because of her response. And I tell this to oh people my God. all the time. What is she thinking? It's not your mistake that people get mad at. It's, it's what you, the response. Yeah, absolutely. The lack of accountability. I'm a normal the victimizing. person, you guys. Yep. I'm not even famous. Um, You have like. Well, you have 10 million followers. Yeah. Had 10 million followers. Oh, yeah. Did you hear? As she was like, yay. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> she lives in an apartment that costs. Grand. $15,000 yeah. a month. And for her to be so like, what's the word I'm looking for? Unself-aware. I mean, maybe. Vapid. But no, like the self-awareness thing is like, you've made videos about how much money you have. And then to be like, you guys, I'm a regular person. Like I've never been on the red carpet at the Academy Awards and have that glam bot person do that, that slow motion. Yeah. I really want to try though. It looks really fun. Cole. One day. You see Cole. This. <laughs> Call we me. love you. I'd be like, my face would be like the ones like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> all yeah. jacked up. <laughs> um, my eyes are just closed the whole time. Yeah, right. I'm like still opening them. And she was like a former like pageant queen. She was married to somebody who played professional football. Like she lives oh, in, really? yes, she's not a regular person. She's not regular. Come on. No regular person pays 17 grand. If she us. just stopped trying to justify it and was like, I fucked up so bad and you're right 
not having talked about this really important world issue and then on the heels of that, doing something like this is so embarrassing for me. I'm shaken to my core at how embarrassed I am at yeah. myself, at my lack of self-awareness, my lack of education, my flippant attitude, the way that I've dismissed people. I'm so sorry. I feel so embarrassed and stupid. I might've yeah. been like, eh, well, she's- A simple like, hey, I've been looking forward to this for so long that I got jaded and, but listening to everyone, you're right. I It was really tone deaf, whatever. Even that, even that would've yeah. been better than whatever that was. Eight minutes of like, I am I normal. I to do that. I'm such a bunch just like your fancy parties. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I will not lie when I tell you I go on that like TikTok counter. Have you ever seen it? Where you watch people's like followings like go up or down. No. And I've just been watching. Here, let me show you. Here, you, just you don't mean social blade? No. There's like an actual counter. I always, when I see people do that, I always did wonder what. Oh, she lost even more since then. Yeah, she's lost I almost. Mean, she's, it's a little negligible the amount that she's lost. But. Well, yeah, well, it's it's probably somewhere around 180,000 followers, something like that. Somewhere around there. And then, you know, and but then, and then there's like the whole celebra celebrities, like Kim Kardashian and all the Kardashians. But what did we expect? What the weird thing is, is like, why were you, did they not, why were they, all those people, I already had blocked. I had the entire Kardashian, Jenner, all of them already blocked. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have to do shit. Not because of their political, I think that they're a plague on the shit. world. Yeah, I hate <laughs> like, them. I, I think that they have done, the, they have sent women back in time 50 years. Kim Kardashian wearing that dress at the fucking Met Gala where her intestines were being squeezed out of yeah. her butt. Like, what is that? That's just such a try hard thing to do. It's Also, it's like for them specifically though, when it affected Armenian people, they understood what genocide oh, was. Oh yeah, isn't that, yeah, exactly. But when people right next door to them are right. having the same thing done, all of a sudden it's, oh, what, what? Right, right. That's crazy. I know. And there's somebody in my comments was like, how can you call it a genocide? It's like, what do you want to call it? What do you want to call it? Because, and then the thing is, is like genocides don't happen overnight. They happen over decades sometimes, like, I don't know, 70, 80 years. Sometimes and then, it seems like it comes overnight. And it's that's like, because you didn't see what was brewing. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's been it's been tough, but yeah, it's just, it's just a lot. But the thing I think we need to focus on is that we as individuals obviously only can do what we can do, right? And I have been trying to do what I can. Um, I'm so proud and happy to say yeah. that for Pal Humanity, which is two doctors, two Palestinian doctors, women, who are literally boots on the ground trying to help babies and women, you know, find formula and diapers and, you know, feminine hygiene products and just like basic necessities and like giving them, you know, aid and all that stuff. We've raised, I think, almost over, to, like I think like two, uh, $200,000 wow, for them. So Their goal much. was 50,000. We started yeah. at 11. Thousand, and I think we're over, we're two hundred something thousand dollars right now, which is fucking incredible. Yeah. And then my and family, family, Salim, yeah, we needed he wanted he needed to raise a hundred thousand dollars, and we've passed that too. Yeah. And he, a family amazing. of you know thirty two people, and then he messaged me, and said that he has enough money now, to when the border opens to get everybody out. He's like, obviously, we're gonna have to rebuild twenty or thirty two lives. Which again, he's gonna take so many. He's like, he's the young dude that like lives in England, and he's like, yeah. So I don't know. I have thirty two family members coming in hot. Like I don't, you know, it's like I don't even know. Like how do you, what, what where do you rebuild? How do you, re like, how does that this process even happen for them? I don't know. But I just, you know, we have to just stay the, our, the course however we can, and just keep doing what we're doing and help in whatever ways I think you know we know how. And I think this was the best way for me. Yeah. This this has made me feel finally just like I'm doing something rather than just talking about it. You know, yeah. you know, being effective in that way is, is very meaningful to me. Yeah, the uh, organizers keep checking in to make sure my mental health is okay, and I'm like, yeah, no, thank you, I appreciate it. But one, I'm constantly in a state of depressive anyway <laughs> because of all this negative stuff that I cover. But also, like, I'm just so driven to try to like panicking to get them out. You I know. know, like my the family. The Almadun family, they currently just had to evacuate Rafa. 
because there were bombs going off next to their tent. So now they're living. Where did out. they go? They went to um, Omicron or something. And I forget what it was called. I think it's that. And then, um, but like they don't have a tent anymore. So this pregnant woman, mom, four-year-old, six-year-old, their mother and their extended family are sleeping outside on the ground. In fact, the dad just got the flu because of it. Ugh. Uh, yeah. So if you guys are watching this yeah. and this is a good time, right? Go to our TikTok pages, go to the our link trees, all of the families, all of the organizations that we're working with, they're all in there. So, or you yourself. Yeah. Sponsor a family. You don't have to do a lot. You don't have to do much. If you make videos on social media, great. If not, just send it a link tree. I've sent these links to my friends and my fam my family and be like, hey, I'm doing this. If you got five bucks, you know, my dad gave me, you know, a couple hundred dollars. He's like, here, split it between the two. And I was just like, okay, cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever you can do, everything counts at this point. At every fucking penny counts yep. at this moment. So couple if you're dollars, if you're inclined, yeah. Please do. Lincoln. Wait, yeah, Lincoln's on the five, right? <laughs> I just had a brain fart for a second. Sorry. I was like, what is he saying? <laughs> What's that word? Okay, anyway. But uh, whew, how was your week? Oh, we didn't <laughs> cover my week. Um, It was good. It was Mother's Day this weekend. Oh, yeah, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Sorry. That's it. Again. <laughs> That's okay. I did text you. <laughs> you did text me. It was fine. It's fine. Um, It was nice. Uh, I woke up late. Not late, but... You got to sleep in. No, I got to lay in bed and pretend like I was sleeping, like I didn't hear my kids and my husband oh, making, making all the fuss and rattling and in, bread, the, in the food and bread. <laughs> bed. <laughs> no, I, I tell them specifically, I don't want food in my bed. I think that's. I, I, hate, I, that. I hate that. I hate that. I don't want like sticky syrup and like donut crumbs in my bed. No. One time, my friend told me about how he was drunk and he woke up like with an open potato chip bag on his chest, and I was like, "That's my nightmare." Oh, so greasy. Yeah, like oh, no. A bad oh no, no, I don't like it. Mm -mm -mm. I don't like it. Um, so they're like, you can come out now. <laughs> like I come out and, and the flowers and the donuts and bagels and all that stuff. And it was really nice. It was, they got me so many gifts and I'm not being ungrateful. I'm just like, yeah, well, you just spent so much money. That's our money. Yeah. <laughs> and like the kids are like, and I got you this. I'm like, no, I bought myself that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I got you this really expensive perfume. I'm like, I paid for that too, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's without that count. They, they did a really good job on my gifts this time. Yeah. Sometimes they get me gifts and I'm like, oh, um, a waffle iron. <laughs> you love that waffle iron. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got me like the big one. Oh, no, this is a like couple a years back. one. Yeah, but I'm like, I then I have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to, to make, make you waffles. Yeah. No, no, this isn't for me. Uh, this is going back. Yeah, keep the receipts. But yeah, no, it was a really nice Mother's Day. And then <sighs> at some point for moms, a lot of the time, like Mother's Day is for the kids. It is for to the make kids. them feel like they're doing nice things for you, which is wonderful because I want them to to feel that full appreciation. But they're like. Later, we're going to go to the beach. I'm like, I don't want to go to the beach. I just want to lay in my bed. <laughs> oh, cool. We're going to go to the beach. Yeah. yeah we're going to take a long family walk on the beach. I'm like, it's fucking freezing. I'm like, this is so <laughs> nice. You guys, I love spending time with you. For Mother's Day this year, we're going to go to the beach and you can just lay in bed. Yes. Oh my God, that's the Great. best present ever. <laughs> See you later. And then, you know, we went to dinner. It was fine. It was great. It was what lovely. What was for dinner, though? We had pizza, which is oh, what I wanted. Because yeah. we had a really nice dinner the night before with my mom. So, oh, we, right. Yeah, we took her out to a nice, like, uh, seafood dinner, which is... When you're an adult, Mother's Day is for the mother. Yes. 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 And we took her to a very nice seafood dinner. Although, for all we know, your mom would have been like, I would have just rather stay at home, me at home. And eat some I know. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. That's actually probably true, too. That's actually, now that in retrospect, I'm like, oh, I dragged her all the way down here. Sorry. <laughs> but no, it was good. Next year. Here's some chige. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave because you probably yeah, want to be alone. You don't want us here. Yeah. That's it. It's good. Did I do anything else this week? No, just working and trying to, you know, raise money and live my life. Yeah. But this coming Saturday, before we get... We're about to do Am I the Assholes? But before, this Saturday, for those of you listening to the podcast, for those of you watch on YouTube, it's going to be a day late. Yes. But if you are listening on the podcast this Saturday at the LA Library, Public Library in downtown LA, we're going to be doing a live recording for next week's episode. I'm so nervous now. We're oh, God. I keep... <laughs> nerve-sided. 
<laughs> nervous, excited but excited. Is what my, my nephew says, nervous sided. Really? Mm-hmm. Great. How old is he? 14. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least you weren't like, he's five. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, cool. My brain works like No, he's like, so he's like, between nervous and excited. I'm nervous sided. And that's that's how I feel. I, I'm really excited. And I think once we like get there and we like start doing the, the podcast, it'll be fine. Um, I think I was about to be like, after it's over, it's going to be fine. Oh, no. For me, it's all the anticipation. Same. The buildup and anticipation is the thing that like really like messes with me. But once I start doing something, I'm like, okay, this feels fine. This is normal. Like, I, I know how to do this. I mean, we're just going to be talking about stuff. With a couple hundred people watching us. Staring at us. Wondering what the fuck they're doing there and how we got on <laughs> stage. Like a couple of fucking talking monkeys, idiots. <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> Ooh, oh boy. Exercise. I don't know what I'm going to wear. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. He started freaking me out like 20 minutes ago. Well, because we want to look casual because it's a casual environment, environment, but we don't want to look like sloppy, but we don't want to look like we tried too hard. What? <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> That's my freaking out face. Oh my God. It looked like a, I'm working out a fart. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Um, it'll but be it's going to be at 3 p.m. It's in an auditorium. It's not like, I don't know if you've ever been to the Central Public Library, but it's fancy as fuck. See? It's really nice there. They have, literally have an auditorium. What's the admissions process? Do you know? Like to, to be like it's a- It's free. No, I know. But like, do you have to like get like a ticket or is it just like people walk in? I think you just walk whoever's in. Whoever's there? Okay. I, th- I think they do have a, not Linktree. What is it? Eventbrite, I think they mm. did set up an Eventbrite page for it, I but like I don't think like... you need a ticket. Okay. I think that's just more for marketing awareness, okay. advertising. Um, but it is, it's going to be at the auditorium there. It's a really fancy auditorium. It even has double doors, two of them. Oh. And it's like, ma- there's like, it's made of stone with like this, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. I forget if I said this last time, but when we went for the walkthrough, I legit had a panic attack when we were standing there because I was freaking out. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll, It'll be, be great. Fine. It'll be yeah, so sorry. Fun. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm not trying to freak you out. I, I, My anxiety just talks. I know I'll be fine. I've done other public televised things yeah. before. I actually thrive at them. Yeah. We're going to be. Actually, but I feel like. But it's the end. You're like you said, yeah. it's the anticipation. Yeah. Shout out to Joanna Fabicom, who is the coordinator who invited us and is doing all the hard work. She's so nice. She's been waiting like for a month and a half She's for so the paperwork patient. that I sent She's to her like, last night. Last night? We talked about this last week, I, Edward. No, ADHD oh is crippling sometimes god. and really annoying. I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> At least it's done. You want to know the reason I why bad. I pushed to do it last night? I was like, if I go you, tomorrow oh and God. Susie knows that I, I would have. Yeah. Come here, motherfucker. I, like, I can't. But that's the, that's, I guess, the dopamine that I needed. <laughs> fear. Fair enough. Fear, fear, fear works. Dopamine. Fear works. Oh, hello. So silly, baby. You guys are being loud. Sorry. <laughs> on that note. Oh, should we tell them what we're going to be doing on the podcast? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, the topic of the podcast at the LA Public Library is going to be questions you wanted to ask Asian people. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. So the theme of the whole event is called AAPI Joy. Oh. So it's about it's about like trials, tribulations, okay. about being an Asian American Pacific Islander, no wait, Native Hawaiian in America. Okay. And so we thought it was most appropriate to include a segment. We're going to do other parts too, like introducing ourselves, talking about our journey. Um, but we also wanted to include that segment that we do did at least once. Okay. Questions for Asian people I love that from one. non-Asian yeah. people. Because I feel like it's a really good way to like talk about the Asian exp- the Asian American so experience. Open about it, right? Yeah. Like it's okay. We know these questions are out there. We yeah. know that people wonder and they are curious, and that's okay. Yeah. That is okay. But you know, and answering them and being upfront and being honest, I think is such a great bridge. Yep. And I think it really helps people like gain not just like insight but comfort. Yep. Like, oh, you're you your people are just as crazy as my people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. you guys do things very similarly to, in my culture as you do in your culture. You know what I mean? So it's, I think building those small little bridges is is the way to to go about these types of situations. Yeah. And then we're also gonna end the uh, event with questions from the audience, including our listener audience. So um, if you do have questions that you want included, please email them ASAP. 
like like email like them like next the week. Day I'm sorry, like you, last week. Yeah, like <laughs> last like today. Not the day you listen to it, the day we're recording it. Try to be psychic <laughs> yeah. and anticipate that we need you to email these things last week. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. We really fucked this up. It's no, okay. we're gonna make TikTok videos too. Yeah, okay. I have this idea where I think we should make a couple. One obviously just explicitly being like, hey, we're doing this thing, come. But you know that trend where people go on vacation and they step over the oh, thing? We yeah. should do that and include the audience, I think. How? No, no, no. I, not like have them do it, but like we do it here. Uh-huh. Like where we, and then we step over and then there we'd finish it off and then like They're all behind pick us. it up. Yeah, or yeah something yeah. like that. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, fun. Yeah. I love that idea. Okay. Cool. Okay, bye. <laughs> that note, <laughs> we're going to decide who are assholes. Who are the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to be careful with words with multiple meanings. Who are assholes? <laughs> Our assholes are assholes. Our. <laughs> I'm sweaty. <laughs> Okay. Which includes the listener write-in. I love these. Shall I take it? Yours, yes. Hi, I wanted to share something that's been on my mind recently and I'd appreciate your opinion, which I really enjoyed listening to as you are the little support I have regarding Asian matters. Heart emoji. As a Korean born and raised in Spain, living in a small, wow, that's interesting. Wow. Living in a small town near Lucky. Barcelona, I'm often the only Asian person many people here encounter. While I love my town and the community, it can be isolating at times being the sole representation to Asian of Asian culture. It's exhausting. I can imagine. Yeah. Aside from the staff at Chinese or Japanese restaurants, you won't find many Asians around. My family, all Korean, live abroad, so I'm here with my Spanish husband and our two-year-old daughter. Interestingly, there's another Asian girl in my daughter's school, which was a surprise. However, something unsettling has happened twice now. When I went to pick up my daughter, they bu- they brought me the, oh. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. God. For those of you listening, I was quiet because my mouth was on the ground. However, something unsettling has happened twice. Now, when I went to pick up my daughter, they brought me the other girl instead. I understand it could be a mistake, but it's also concerning, especially considering security security issues. I've spoken with the school about being more careful, but it's frustrating and upsetting. Wow. Was it her teachers? Because that's (sighs) very concerning. You don't even know your own students? I've discussed this with my husband and friends, and it's been challenging to make them understand. My husband initially suggested not mentioning racism as it might have been a simple human error. Twice? This suggestion upset me because it felt like he was dismissing my feelings. It's not the same as if a white person were mistaken for another white person. After some discussions, he's apologized, but I still feel like they don't fully grasp the situation. I'm trying to educate them about racism and why the kindergarten incident was a matter of racism. Do you think I'm wrong to do so? How can I help them understand, especially in our predominantly white town? Any suggestions on how I can approach this with my friends? Thank you for listening. I recently started listening to your podcast and I have to say I'm addicted. Oh, it's been so relatable. It's like hearing stories from my childhood. Thank you. Ron made it. You made a whole nother nother page. Thank you. Or We'll reuse it. It's not gonna get a waste, but. Yeah, I don't think you're in the Ooh. wrong at all. Okay. First off, I'm, I have to think. You know me. I'm, I have to put I'm myself very, in like, the situation. <clears throat> That's dangerous. Impressed that we made it to Spain. Also, Barcelona is like one of my favorite cities yeah. from an, like a archaeological culture standpoint. Hold on, I'm trying to like put myself in the situation with surrounded by only white people. There's literally only one other Asian kid in the class. And the first time is a mistake. I could see that. The second time is a, we don't give a fuck. And you guys all, yeah. Ugh. But then, but then it's so hard, right? Because she's the only person there to stand up against it. And that's so scary. Also because your kid has to go to that school. Wait, why doesn't she get together with the other mom or father who's obviously also Asian. That's a great I guess question. Unless, unless it's a transracial adoptee, so that might not happen either. Who knows? Yeah, right. But like the thing that really throws me off and actually really angers me is the fact that like the husband and the other people in the family don't realize the security risk. 
Of course. Like it's such a, what do you mean? You, you sent my kid home with somebody else or like you just let them leave with some, like you, right. you gave them to the Cause, wrong people. Cause it's not even just, let's be honest. It's probably not even going to just happen with the two kids. It's right. like some random Asian lady just went, went up. She, they could just kidnap your child. Right. Right. I, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy too. But like, I would feel really like, I would feel like, you know, guys, there are only two of us here. You must understand that we know that we're different from you guys. And for you to then make it so that not only are we different, but we're simultaneously all the same is like double whammy. You know what I mean? Like we feel so isolated as it is. And then for you to not even acknowledge that we're individuals is so fucked up. I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I'm so, I'm so sorry that your child, I'm sure either your child or the other child must've been like, uh, that's not my mom. Yeah. Like that, that's going to stay with me. And the other insinuation is that, is that it's like, it's not even just a human. It's, it, it almost feels like what happens behind the scenes is like, it's, oh, that Asian girl. Just, just grab, grab one of them. Asian grab girl. one of the Asians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. I mean, how would you help them understand? I think in the same way we try to get other people to understand. And, you know, sometimes by example, sometimes by hypothetical, and sometimes just being like, I'm just going to be as honest with you as I possibly can be. When things like this happen, it not only, you know, makes me relive certain traumas I've had through my life, but now you're creating them for my child. And I don't want that for her. We can do better. I need you to do better. You are, I am just as much a part of this community as you are. And I need you to do better because you are not affecting just me. You're affecting my daughter, the other family's daughter and all the children in your class. Because if you cannot distinguish them here and right now, what's happening in the classroom? Right. What's happening in, in the actual school? Right. Are you controlling what the children are saying and doing in regards to my children? Because are our, our children, because you know that they're different? Right. What's happening with that? If so little care is being taken as to who you're letting my child go home with, how can I trust whatever is That's happening true. in that classroom? Like you, my child might be getting bullied. Now I'm you mad. You might not care. I at first was just ex just flabbergasted. Now I'm mad. Now my hands are hot. I feel like what I- What the fuck is going on in that classroom <laughs> right now? If you can't even tell my That's kid true. apart, are you giving my kid that other kid's grades? How, how the fuck would I know? Yeah. I, are, you, are, they, are you teaching them the wrong thing because they're at maybe different reading levels, but yeah. you don't care enough to differentiate them? What the fuck is going- Oh my God. Or like you're brushing off bullying. I honestly, I feel like I would take the security approach. Maybe you shouldn't have asked me because now I'm like, you go in and you flip every fucking desk in that school. That's the only, I'm sorry. That's the only choice now. There's no other, no other thing you can do. I feel like I would take on the security part. Yeah, but that's just like, that's part of it. But you have to encapsulate that with why yeah, this no. security breach yeah, has, yes. has happened. I mean, I wouldn't ignore the other part, but I would go in heavy with the security part because I feel like then, I don't know how the laws are in, in Spain, but then there's like a fear of like, oh, is she going to sue us? Is there, you know what I mean? Like, sure. I feel like I would go, but like, I don't, I have children. So like, I don't, you know, I'm not very. I have children. Flipping the desks is the only thing you can do. <laughs> okay. I have two daughters. And if they brought me a, the wrong kid, just because they were Asian, I would have to be like, sweetie, oops, they brought you to the wrong mommy. Go back in class. I have to flip all the fucking, <laughs> go, go to the yard, go to the play structure. I'm going to go in your classroom and flip every fucking desk in this school. Even the ones that aren't even in your class. Because the kindergarten ones are too easy to flip. They're but so like small. seriously though, <laughs> there's two of them. There's How two. How hard is that? You have no problem differentiating between the 15 other white kids in the class. Right, exactly. And, and the thing too is like, it sounds like her child is mixed or she is mixed. She's yeah. Spanish and Korean. Is the other child mixed? Do they have the same color? That's what I mean. I have my own two children who look completely different. Completely different. And they're mixed. Yeah. So you're telling me that these two children who come from two different parents, I'm guessing maybe, I don't know, that they look the same? And even if they did, <laughs> even if they did, you can't fucking do that. I'm no. pissed. Mm, now I'm upset. Because <laughs> if that happened in my school, I'd be so mad. I'd be so mad. And so, but let's be proactive. I think, if, you know, especially your friends, you're saying, she's saying that her friends don't even understand. And that's so hard too. But like, oh, you're overreacting. Come on, it's but, not that big of a deal. 
But if she like mixed up her times and picked up her child aid, that would be an issue. Yeah, or like of course. if she volunteered to do like chaperoning for a trip and she got the days mixed up, that would be an issue. Um, oh, you look like you Archie. look like an itty bitty Falcor right now. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Archie. Wait, you look like Falcor. Don't move. Oh. Don't move, you look like Falcor. Because you're my sweet baby. I know. <laughs> No, don't Do rub it on it? my arm. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't rub it on my <laughs> arm. <laughs> Your baby. You're my baby. Go back to sleep, sweet baby. I love you so much. Oh, my God. Did you really? Do oh, you're laying it on thick today. <laughs> For our listeners, Archie and Susie are having a moment. <laughs> Archie's being really just milking yeah, it. It really is. So. He's like, "Aren't I cute though? I'm so <laughs> cute. <laughs> Look at me. I'm so cute. Where is your hand going?" <laughs> <laughs> well, while they're doing that, am I the asshole for ordering fried pork intestines at a Chinese restaurant my girlfriend took me to? Why? No. If it's on the yeah, menu, what? unless it's not on the menu and yeah. it's like a vegan Chinese place. Unless you like ordered it to just per purposely be like, Bleh! right. In well, let's find out. Me, 24 male, and my girlfriend, 23 female, of two years went out to an Asian restaurant yesterday. She's a female of two years? <laughs> and my girlfriend of two years. Okay. 23 female of two years. I was like, oh, okay. I'm a white guy. She's Archie, what are you doing? He's flipping over. He's just melting, honestly. I'm a white guy. She's Asian. And she had been saying all before we went how I shouldn't be afraid to try the real Chinese food that they have there. And I kept saying I was looking forward to it. This is so distracting. What do you mean? <laughs> because I love trying new things. But every time I said that, she just raised an eyebrow and went, We'll see. Wait, the girlfriend's Chinese? I'm sorry, I was yeah. also distracted. She's Asian. Okay. But she's the one suggesting that they should. he should try real Asian or Chinese food. Okay. So, well, we get there, and the menu was in Mandarin with English subtitles. Hold on, is this just like full camera, like <laughs> yeah. baby bits? This is Patreon. You have to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is our OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. We don't have that. Only just dogs. So you know, only dogs. <laughs> only dogs. Oh, that sounds That sounds gross. really bad. Yeah. Like should, As you process the I things like we you should say. edit that even to the point, because that was, wow. What? Or she's like, I don't consent. <laughs> yeah. I said no. No, daddy. Well, we get there, and the menu was in Mandarin with English subtitles. They wrote, you wrote. And they had all kinds of things on it I'd never even imagined. It looked awesome. I ordered jellyfish tentacles over vinegar as an appetizer, and she just went, okay, I get it. Ha ha. Ordering the weirdest thing on the menu just to prove me wrong. And she, like, wouldn't believe me when I really enjoyed the dish. She tried some, and she just went, whoa, oh, my God, there's no way you like that. And I just went, well, would you like to come take a seat inside my brain so you can tell for sure? <laughs> I'm going to use that. I love that. <laughs> she just rolled her eyes. I ordered the fried pork intestine. I had the tripe and I liked that. So I figured this would be cool. And the waiter was trying to discourage me from ordering it because he didn't think I would like it. As soon as he said that my girlfriend just pounced and was like, yeah, no, he wouldn't like that. Don't order that. Order something you would like. Order fried rice or something. <laughs> The same person who was telling him to order more authentic Chinese. Yeah. Food. Although fried rice is authentic. And I was like, no, I want to try fried pork intestine. And I'm ordering fried pork intestine. I'm not here to try fried rice. You can get that anywhere. I'm here for something I can't get anywhere else. And the waiter just cautiously took down the order. <laughs> my girlfriend was like, well, you didn't have to be like that. I didn't even raise my voice. <laughs> so... I finally get the pork contestant. One of the chefs pokes his head out of the kitchen to watch me eat it. <laughs> and it was incredible. Huh. I asked my girlfriend if she wanted any. She made a weird face and said, no, obviously you went and ordered the grossest thing possible just to make a point and accused me of being passive aggressive. I ate it all. 
and wished there was more. And all the way home, she was saying how I'm passive aggressive and she can't believe I did what I did. And when we got home, I just said, look, I can't believe you're upset that I ordered food from a place you took me to. And you're even more upset that I liked it. She said, if you're going to be like this about my culture, then you are never meeting my parents. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I was being passive aggressive and I just didn't realize it. People can be passive aggressive unconsciously, right? I thought I was ordering what interested me and eating food I enjoyed. And I'm probably going to go back to that place without her because the food was straight up fire. But maybe I should have ordered something, quote, less Asian. So it didn't look like I'm bragging about how I can handle Asian food. I don't know. Sometimes I believe like she should just be with an Asian guy so she can be with someone she believes. Okay, there's a couple things happening here, right? She's obviously acting out of trauma, right? Yes. She's acting out of trauma and she's like, trauma response you're for using sure. my food as some kind of fear factor-esque challenge. And you're just trying to do something gross to prove how disgusting my our food is and therefore degrading me. He also though is like, let me white savior this. See, I can eat this culture's food and I am so cultured and above all the other, you know, so there's be, that yeah, element yeah. going on too. And also she's kind of like, I don't need you to validate our, that our food is good. I don't need you to fucking do that. Where he probably may, was very much like, I just kind of want to try it. So like, I understand that too, but I think when you're in an interracial relationship, you have to be very conscious, I think, of the potential for things that your partner may have gone through that you are not aware of or have experienced yourself and therefore tread lightly on those kinds of things. Like maybe you didn't have to order every exotic dish on the menu. You could have just been like, we're also going to get the General So's chicken. Because that feels temperate a little bit rather than being like, watch this. I can eat all this. It's actually really good. Like, cool. Thank you. So you... Cool, so like my entire culture's food's not disgusting. Yeah. That, that's so validating. What would we do without you? Thank you so much. Does that sound bitchy? <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, hey, <laughs> we're trying to not fight. <laughs> no, I actually started coughing while okay, I was I was like, oh no, did it's, I make you nervous? I know, that's what it sounded like. But as I started <laughs> like, saying, oh, shit, uh, I started question. to cough. <laughs> I had something in my throat. I don't, I do, I can see the white savior thing, but I genuinely feel like this guy was, Maybe overcompensating. There was an element to that, right? Yeah, there you was. know, he was like, you know, you wanted me to try it. So like, I want to prove to you that like, I'm not ignorant. Like I can try things. I, f I feel like it was more that with a little underlying like subconscious white savior, but I think it was mostly the overcompensating. Yeah. She was definitely having a trauma response. Absolutely. For sure. As 100%. someone who trauma responses all the time. Yes. I can, I can definitely see that. I don't think... Either people are the asshole. I don't think so either. I think, I think she can, con I think at, at some point she can cool down and realize that like, hey, you know what? I don't think you had any malintent. I was just acting out of trauma moving forward. Maybe like this, that, or other. You know what I mean? Right. But I don't think either of them were the asshole. I don't think so either. I think this is something that they can like really use to like, grow their relationship. Like, yeah. I just need you to understand that when I ask you to try new things, you don't have to swing the pendulum so, so far, far. Yeah. and you don't need to prove anything. It's more just like a suggestion that you and I can do something like this and enjoy yeah. together. And then you can kind of, you know, and become part of this culture that I'm so proud of that I love so much. But when you push so far the other way, it almost feels like a mockery of it. Yeah. You know, like, oh, look at this intestine. I'm eating it. Oh, I love it. Ha ha ha. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like it's it's over the top. And maybe when you do that, it is the reaction that I, I, I would want, but it's conveyed in a way that makes me feel like you're mocking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I but feel I like, also recognize that I don't think you meant that. Right. Yeah. Right. I see that. <clears throat> I can see you were trying yeah, and I know that that's what you wanted to do and to bring us closer by doing what I asked you to do. And I know that it sounds kind of shitty now that I'm like, yeah, but not like that. <laughs> and I am sorry for saying that, like, I don't want you to meet my parents. Cause that part was that's a hurtful. bit of a, that was a little hurtful for sure. We just fixed your relationship. <laughs> Hopefully you it's guys, not too late. You guys probably already broke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then also him being like, maybe she should just date somebody that's Asian. It's like, or, or, 
maybe you can understand that she's been through stuff that you've never been yeah, through and give her just a little bit of, you know, Room a little to, bit of slack yeah. to be like, I get that you might've had a visceral reaction to this because I've never experienced anything quite like that. And it sounds to me like you have more than once. So me not understanding and just reading the room was was my fault. And for that, you know, let's let's not repeat this pattern. Yeah. Let's do let's do this differently next time. And that's you know, that takes self a self pity ruins relationships a lot. Who yeah, but who's pitying themselves? Him by being like oh. maybe you should just like be okay. with an Asian guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think it was more out of self pity than trying to be hurtful, even though it did both. I feel like maybe like pity, but maybe just like. I don't want to try beyond the way I want to try. Yeah. yeah you know, okay. like For I sure. want to try this, the way you ask, the thing you asked me to do, I'm going to try it in the way I want to try it, but not in a way that's maybe conscious of how you're interpreting it. Yeah. And that to me is like, so fuck it. Now you, so you just go date somebody that, that will understand whatever it is you're going through. That to me is just kind of like a fucking, what's what I'm looking for? Hello, premenopause brain. What's the word I'm looking for? It's a cop out. Yeah. <laughs> it, that part is passive aggressive. Right. Am I the asshole for refusing to bow to my crayon? Crayon? <laughs> my crayon. What? My crayon fiance. Oh, you fancy. <laughs> crayon. It sounds like, like Creole. Yeah. Okay. She thinks, Susie thinks she's like French Italian <laughs> or something. Low, like, was it deep south? Okay. Yeah. Am, I, am I the asshole for refusing to bow to my Korean fiance's grandparents? Which is funny because fiance is a friend. Right. <laughs> and then what happened? Your brain skipped My forward. Korean fiance. But the answer is yes. Yes. Um, my fiance is Korean American and I'm American. Mm. Ooh, we're off to a bad start. Yeah, that's a very bad start. <laughs> she is also. Anyway. Uh, actually, I don't even know who's. I don't even know who's, okay, wait. Uh, we met each other, we've met each other's parents before and she's met my grandparents, but I've yet to meet her grandparents because they live in Korea. We're planning a trip to Korea as soon as it's possible so that I can meet her grandparents. She's asking me to bow to her grandparents when we meet since respecting the elders is a big deal in Korean culture. Not just like a casual dip, like a full, <laughs> like a full 90 degree bow. I said I'd rather not since I found it emasculating. <laughs> Sorry, Archie, to scare you. Strike up. two, dude. Yeah. And that I just don't bow to anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Men with little Toxic egos. Toxic masculinity. Yeah. God. She good. said that it was important to her culture, but I pointed out that she didn't bow to my grandparents or parents. Because it's just, not a part of their uh, culture. Oh, my God. What? I just think it's hypocritical to expect me to bow to her grandparents and then she didn't bow to mine. Her grandparents aren't my superior just because they're age. Why should I have to bow? Like- Cause that's how you, oh did you, when your fiance met your grandma, did she shake their hand? Because yeah. that's the customary right. way to be well, a polite, right? What? She said it was just one tiny thing that I could do to earn their respect. But I said that if it was so tiny, it should be fine that I don't do it. And that I respect myself and that's why I'm not going to bow. And she said, she was just going to have to respect my decision. She thinks I'm an asshole for that. Am I the asshole? Yes. A raging one. You're a tiny, you're insecure. An insecure yeah. uh, to think that it, to to feel emasculated bowing to like elderly people is like such a like small man's problem. Like that's what you that's your problem. And the the, the idea of that like, your counterpoint is saying you didn't bow to my your grandparents don't come from a, a bowing culture. Yeah. It would be super weird for her to do that. Like what? What, what if she's like, oh, I come from a culture where we slap each other on the ass and she slapped your grandma on the butt. Well, how, oh, sorry. Like that's just, you just, you you follow the culture of the people that you are with if like, you want to show respect. But like, also where does it stop? If he's like, oh, you know, I don't want to eat their Korean food. Like where right. does it end? I don't want to take my shoes off when I go to their house. Y you're done. Yeah. Get out, fuck off. You're done. You're that's, fucking done. That to me would be, reason enough to break up. Yeah, I've never asked my husband to bow to my parents, but if I did, he would 100% do it. He would have zero problem doing it. Cause that, and, and he admitted, respecting your elders is an important part of their culture. So right. are you So it's not that he's not understanding it. To being respectful? No, it's just all insecurity. And showing respect is a sign of emasculation? That is so sad. Yeah, in Babe. fact, I thought being respectful was being a man? Right, right. If you can't muster the respect 
and you find respect to be emasculating, then then yeah, this, you you are the asshole. You are the absolutely the asshole. See ya. Oh like, my god! If I bow, I feel like less of a man. Well, that speaks to your manhood, not to the bowing. This guy's okay? this guy's not even an asshole. He's like a hemorrhoid that you need to have removed. Ugh. I so lucky I never got those when I was pregnant. It's very common. Think about all that pressure yeah, down no, there. I get it. I just. <laughs> I mean, it's like, my fault. I brought it up. <laughs> it's I brought it up. Yeah, like, you said hemorrhoid. I didn't yeah, bring it, up. it was my fault. Uh, so yeah. Uh, long answer, long. Yes, you're the asshole. Bowing makes me feel emasculated. Well, what doesn't? No, then? your insecurity does. If, if if that makes you feel emasculated, like what doesn't make you feel emasculated? Right. Like there's like no limit. It's boundless. That's what your I'm saying. Where does it stop? It's, you made it hey, too honey, easy. Hey, honey, I need you to go get me some like sanitary pads. Yeah. No. No, I won't. It do makes it. me feel emasculated. Yeah. Or like if we ever had a baby together. Hey, yeah. you need to go buy diapers. No, that's no. a woman's job. The last time he peed, they peed on me. I feel yeah. emasculated. Okay. Get well, get the fuck out of here. We fuck went you. from. A person who over overly was trying to commit himself. I to know. Something. Yeah, it was like polar ends of the Talk spectrum. Talk about pendulum swings. Jeez yeah. Louise. Yeah. Am I the asshole for suggesting my friend go back to therapy after how she after how she reacted in a Chinese restaurant? I don't feel like you should suggest to people they go to therapy, but we'll find out. I don't feel like that's really anyone's place. I don't feel like that's ever appropriate. Unless it's like in a setting where you're like asking the question very respectfully being like hey maybe i don't know go to i don't know even out. as i say it i don't okay. i don't know how i would do that okay so yesterday me 28 female jess 28 27 female and three other friends mid to late 20s female all female went to a chinese restaurant i'm chinese jess is half chinese japanese and the rest of the friend group are asian if that's relevant it is for context, Jeff unfortunately was a victim to a verbal racist attack when COVID first started. It was such an awful thing to happen, and I'm still mad it happened. The incident traumatized her quite horribly, oh, okay. and she went to therapy for a couple of years. Okay. We are getting seated, and there is a Caucasian man with his son, maybe like six to eight years old. They smile at me, and I smile back. Anyway, our food comes, and the kid is curious, and I can hear him asking his dad, what are those ladies eating? The dad happily explains to his son the different kinds of seafood, like peepees? I don't know what that is. Peepees? <laughs> P-I-P-I-S? I have never heard or read that word before. Peepees? Peepees? Pipees? Pipees? Peepees? I feel like it's peepees. Peepees? Okay, go on. Peepees? Peepees. Maybe peepees? I don't know. And pork belly, I'm really sorry. I do not mean to be offensive. I've literally never seen that word before. And pork belly and noodle dishes we are eating. It was really clear that they weren't making fun of the food for us. And honestly, I thought it was cute that the kid was interested, but Jess started getting agitated. I asked her what was up, and she said she didn't like that they were talking about us. Me and my friend tried to just say they were talking about the food we were eating. Mm. Unexpectedly, as Jess is quite shy, she stood up and said to the dad, this isn't a zoo, you know. Then she. Yes, the shellfish. I've never heard of that before. Apparently it's like a clam like shellfish, as Ron just said. They're little peepees. <laughs> Is that how it's pronounced? That I don't know. Okay. Then she walked out and some of us followed her out. And me and my other friend apologized to the man and the kid who were really shocked. Oh, I know. Outside, we were trying to console Jess. She was adamant that the man was teaching his kid to be racist, but we were all trying to tell her it wasn't like that. And she said that we were invalidating her. Mm. This went back and forth with us trying to say that the man and kid weren't being racist. Finally, in my effort to try to help, I suggested maybe Jess should go back to therapy. That was not the time and place to do that. Jess gave me a really dirty look, called me a shit friend, and left. I don't disagree with Jess in that moment. Because mm. uh, that was a shit friend. That was a, The timing was shit. A couple of my friends... Although acknowledging that the way Jess reacted to the man and the kid was abnormal, told me it wasn't my place to suggest that. But my other friend said that I wasn't wrong. Not being not wrong does not mean that you were not inappropriate. Yes. And as her friend who cares about her well-being, I had a right to suggest that. Jess and I have been friends since high school. 
and I spent a great deal of time supporting her after the racist incident. Am I the asshole? There's some updates. Should we take a second? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, peep us. Peep us. I apologize. Peep us? No, that's peep, different. Peep us. Peep us. Okay. Um, Obviously, it's not peepees. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's I'm so how sorry. I wrote it. It's not it's nobody's fault. Um, I think her efforts were admirable. And I think trying to like walk your friend off of the ledge and be like, it wasn't what you thought it was. I could see why Jess would think it was invalidating, but it wasn't. It was you in misinterpreted this situation. I mean, her feelings weren't invalid because of her trauma. They just weren't correct. Right, right. Is, um, that, is that what invalidating means? No, Wait. no. <laughs> invalidating would be like, yes, this happened to you, but it's not a big deal versus that is not what's happening. Mm, yes, yeah, That is right, different. Right. Actually, you're right, I yeah. agree. And this is not what happened. You took this to, to a, a level that it shouldn't have reached. That I think is totally valid. Yeah. But in the moment when somebody is feeling invalidated and hurt and upset and is having a trauma response, telling them that they should go to therapy is not the right time. Yeah. And again, not really anyone else's suggestion to be made. Now, that's not to say that at some point having a conversation being like, you know, productive and helpful in yeah. a calmer situation, like everybody's already intensity is already up being like, go back to therapy when I'm feeling fucking um, pissed off. Hey, you know, that's not right. You know, that's a bit, no. Um, no. There was no way. And now, you know, there's no way she was going to have the upper hand in that situation at all. No. That would actually really hurt my feelings if my friend told me that while I was having, experiencing what she was experiencing. Yeah. I you agree. just leveraged my need for therapy against me in a moment where I needed yeah, you to be you supported. weaponized mental health. Right. right. That's how it comes off versus being like, hey, I feel like maybe this is still traumatizing. Well, because this you. is what it sounds like, right? You're overreacting. You're crazy. Yep. That is what, That's it, is. what, it, what it sounds like. That is what it sounds like. That's what? how I would take it. Yeah. You're misinterpreting this whole thing. You're insane. Go yeah. to therapy. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I would, I would shut down. I would just lay down on the, the sidewalk. Yeah. Nope. We're not friends anymore. Go away. Leave me here. The fuck away from me. For those asking what happened, essentially a group of men approached and surrounded her at a train station, shouting racist comments at her. If someone hadn't intervened, she would have very likely been bashed or SA'd. Mm. For those saying I should drop her as a friend, we've had a- What? Who the hell said that she should drop her as that? a friend? That's insane. Ignorant people. We've had a friendship that's lasted nearly 15 years. And I'm also, not, you clearly don't know what friendships mean yeah. and what they're for. Probably also don't know what marriages are because, right. yeah. I'm not going to just give up on her because of an incident like, like this. And she honestly has never done anything like this before. Yeah, again, because of trauma. Yeah. She needs support. And when the incident occurred, I didn't know how to appropriately handle it. Honestly, yes. it did feel like they got overwhelmed. Yeah. We don't know what else to say. I don't know what to do. Go to yeah. therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let somebody else deal with this because I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. That's what that sounds like. Panicked. Yeah. Thank you everyone for your advice, but about it being wrong timing. Upon reflection and talking with my friends, we realized that none of us saw the signs early enough during the dinner that she was in crisis. Mm. We should have seen it when she started getting agitated inside of the restaurant and perhaps taken her outside for a moment instead of dismissing her. None of us are really equipped to deal with someone in mental crisis and we are considering going to mental health first aid. Finally, I tried to call and then message Jess and apologize, but she did not reply. However, her mom, her mom did call me today. I did not message her and told me that Jess felt really bad about what happened and wanted to apologize to me and my friends. Jess also said she didn't mean what she said about me being a bad friend and she was having a panic attack at the time. Jess isn't feeling ready to talk to us yet and would rather her family support her for now until she feels better. In the meantime, we will be sending chocolates and self-care items. Well, it sounds like it was, it's moving in the right direction. It does. And it really does sound like Jess. And again, you know, when somebody does something, oh, Jess is 100% traumatized. But, you know, when you do something wrong and you hurt somebody, you know, the apology is fine. But it's it's in your actions that the apology really lives, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're like, we're gonna go and do like some mental health first aid training, we're gonna try to find ways to be, you know, better Support. equipped when these things happen, it's in the action. It's in the action, not the apology that it matters. Yep. And so the fact that this group of friends loves her so much and is like, hey, 
we fucked this up. We were not ready for this. We did not know how to do this. We did not handle it well. We will be, we are going to prepare ourselves. We're gonna better ourselves. And we're going to be there for yeah. you in a much more you know, healthy way for you and to make you feel heard and protected and safe because that is obviously everyone's objective here. And like that is so helpful. I, I think that's, I think I would hope that, you know, everybody has friends like that. Yeah. Okay, that's that what a fucking true friend hurt. <laughs> Archie. No more. No. There you go. Play with this. Don't bite me. It's my fault for letting you bite me. But yeah, they sound like a good group of friends. They sound very, Jess very seems very like sweet. she's going through a really hard time. Being surrounded and having people throw slurs at you as feeling like your life was potentially in danger, like sounds really scary. That's horrible. It sounds really scary. And I, you know, that's the thing about triggers, right? It's like you never know. I mean, a man having dinner with his son shouldn't feel threatening. It should it should feel no. totally not yeah. like a thing. And for her to have that kind of reaction proves that she has she has some work to do too. Yeah. And she's she's gonna have to work through that. Cause that's that's really hard. But to know that something like that is triggering to her means that it's really on the surface. It's still right there at the top. And it lives right there. And she's gonna, you know, poor thing. I feel bad for her. That's gotta be really fucking scary. It's really scary. But at least her friends are good. Thank God. She's she's actually, yeah. In the moment they fucked it up, but they are they sound like a really good group of friends. One more? What does Wibta mean? Would I be? <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Wibta. Wibta peepees. <laughs> Let's just throw out all the words we don't know today. <laughs> Would I be the asshole for leaving my adopted family and going back to Korea? Whoa, that's heavy. heavy. I'm Korean and I was adopted by a white couple. My whole life, I felt like they adopted me as a status symbol or as evidence that they're good people. Oof. My adopted siblings were of other nationalities as oh well. Oh my God, it's like that family. Remember that Angela influencer Jolie's family? family? No, that influencer oh, family. Oh yeah, that, that like gave, gave her kid back. Yeah, yeah, because he was like autistic. Uh, I have an older sister from Africa and one brother from the Philippines. They both still live in Canada, but they're not very close to my parents. My parents didn't neglect or harm us. We had food and clothes and shelter, but I felt uneasy throughout growing up by some of the things that they've said to us. They've used my sister as evidence that they aren't racist. Oh, no. I went to a predominantly white school and didn't know much about Korea. My parents made it sound awful though. Oh. I had white friends that probably couldn't point Korea out on a map. In eighth grade, I went to summer camp and I'm, when I, and I met a Korean boy. We started dating and still are. Cute. He introduced me to my culture, which I'm very thankful for. My parents did try to discourage that and wouldn't pay for Korean lessons. What the fuck? Yeah. It's one thing to be like ignorant, but to like actively work against it is something completely fucking yeah, different. that's crazy. Instead, my boyfriend's parents taught me and even taught me how to cook Korean. My parents hated this. So now that I'm 18 and want to go back to Korea. So now I'm 18 and I, Oh God. So now that I'm 18, I want to go back to Korea. My boyfriend has to go back to Korea. What? Oh, my boyfriend has to go back to Korea. Oh, Something I, yeah, to do with, oh, the army. Yeah. He actually said he wants to stay in Korea when he's done and encouraged me to join him. I was thinking of going to Korea and teaching. They're looking for English speaking teacher, teachers, according to my boyfriend. I haven't spoken to my parents about it, but I did talk to, about this with my sister. She told me that she understands why I want to go, but I'll be abandoning my parents who took me in when nobody else wanted me. She said that I'm ungrateful. It's interesting that she would say that. She told me to visit Korea and to continue learning and enjoying my culture, but only that. Uh, would I be the asshole for making this decision? I've never connected that much to my parents and felt like this feel and I felt like they resented that I was Korean while I was also milk huh? oh, while also milking it. It's a weird feeling that I can't explain. I'd love I do love them and I'm thankful for them, but I do want to follow my boyfriend. Would I be the asshole? Hell no. I don't think so. I don't think so either. However, I don't think you should do this just to follow your boyfriend. <laughs> Side note. Um, yeah, no, I, I, as a recruiter who talked to many people, <laughs> When they relocated yes. and they told me it was for their no, significant other, like 99% of the time it did not work out, but they have been together for six years. Yeah. On the issue of abandoning your parents, I feel like they abandoned you first. Yeah. Emotionally. Yeah. I feel like supportively trying to keep your, the culture that you're trying to understand from you and discouraging you from doing it and like making you feel like, you know, re that they resent you for it is no, I, I, I say do it. 
I am very surprised that the sister yeah. said that because she and the brother also don't have a relationship. And maybe she hasn't fully like kind of gone through the. Oh, what was has that? been a little bit indoctrinated. She hasn't maybe? worked out her yeah her um tokenism tokenization. Because honestly. It kind of does sound like the parents did it to like virtue signal. Of course. I mean, it's obviously, I mean, to like say like, we're not going to let you learn to speak Korean. Like, what the fuck is that? What do you mean? I mean, even a lot of parents who do have biological children, they use their kids. Yeah, of course. So I can't stand that. Like influencers, like who use their kids and content. I'm like, oh, it's the worst. Like using their kids to have a personality or to like have something to contribute to the world is like, I, I do agree. I think some maybe don't have ulterior motives, but many do seem like they do. Like again, that family who adopted that little Asian boy. Archie. And then rehomed him because it was too difficult to have someone who's so autistic. terrible. Yeah. Um, so long story short, I don't think you're the asshole for wanting to pursue learning about your own culture and you know, something that was literally like kept from you. I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. Now I will say you are only 18 years old. So maybe going on the pretense that you're going for your boyfriend, you're so young. But but to be honest, even if it didn't work out, she would have learned so much about the culture yeah. that she's been yearning for. Yeah. And I think even then it would be a good idea. Right. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And And maybe, you know, I think when you get there, go out on your own. Yeah. You know, learn about it on your own and really kind of. But it would help to have her boyfriend for at least a little bit to help ease her in with the fear, you know? I guess. But I do agree. At some point, make sure you're not attached at the hip. Right. Make your friends explore the culture. Right. Yeah. Right. For sure. Okay. My dogs need to get fed. That's crazy though. But so mm. <laughs> on that note, uh, I do say that a lot. You do. It's like my go-to segue. It's okay. I, we all have them. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked so hard to get rid of my ums that my other fillers yeah. are just repetitive. Yeah. Um. Oh, well, there it you goes. You just said it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm panicking. With that being said. <laughs> <sighs> no, but... uh. Thank you for listening. If you are listening, again, we do have a live podcast this Saturday at the LA Public Library. Free for everyone to come. Please come. It's at three o'clock. It's at the auditorium that is there. But seriously, thank you for joining us. You can follow us on our socials. Oh, sorry. You can find me at Sujo one on TikTok and Instagram. She was too busy judging me. No, I was thinking about what you just said about having, oh, anyway, go on. Sorry. Moles? Yeah. I was like, well, was it not there before? Like, have you gotten a check? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I think that's been there. Okay. Everyone get your skin checked. Yeah. You can follow, you can find me at Etch a Sketch with a J. Archie, who's not here right now, is at Archie and Colt on Instagram. Otherwise, make sure you watch us on YouTube if you're not. Uh, and if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Make sure you ask, uh, write in to ask us any questions for the next episode or just in general for episodes like these at what in the shibile at gmail. G gmail. What is happening? What is happening? Korea. <laughs> Gmail.com. Korean film, say. <laughs> Gmail.com. <laughs> If you would like to help us keep this podcast sustainable, think about joining our Patreon. That's linked down below. Please go check out Susie and my profile so that you can look for any families in Gaza to help rescue them and get them to safety. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. And we will see you on Saturday. Yay! Okay, okay bye. bye. Pee -pee. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's peepees. Archie, who was... Rubbing his pee-pees on my arm. <laughs> <laughs>